Thank you guys so much for coming out. Um, how is the second day of GamerX? Yeah. I heard, I heard this morning that it was officially confirmed that there's next year, so yeah. that is super exciting. Woo. Power to the people. Mm. And actually, that dovetails really nicely into our panel. Um, oh. So, so uh, I'm. Did you introduce I'm, ourselves first? I was about to. Oh, oh but sorry. Okay. All right. Go, go, do it. Well, now I don't want to. <laughs> now I feel like you're forcing me to. I have no agency anymore. Depriving agency is my livelihood. Well, my name's Jessica Marzen. I lead the community team for Bioware Edmonton, Montreal. Um, the titles that I work on are Mass Effect, Dragon Age, and a third IP that I can't tell you about. Um, <laughs> Ooh, I know. Um, I, maybe they haven't even told me about it, I don't know. That might be above my pay grade. No, it's not, but it maybe is. Anyway, um, and I'm, I am sitting next to... Uh, my name's David Gator. I'm the lead writer on the Dragon Age series. I've uh, been with Bioware now for about 15 years, so... Veteran. Pretty good. Veteran of fan feedback, how about that? <laughs> so, how many of you have thoughts about your favorite game series? <laughs> uh, how many of you have a Facebook account and like things and are active on your Facebook account? Okay, how many of you are on Twitter? How many of you are on any forum of something that you are passionate about? <laughs> That's... A that's actually like a pretty, pretty, pretty good. good, pretty good number. Um, we have some very um, activated people here. That's that's awesome to hear. Um, how many of you feel like when you are leaving your feedback, it is going into a black hole of nothingness? Yeah, that's about right. That's about right. <laughs> well, I, we are here to tell you that that is not necessarily true, and oh, I am also here to tell you that uh, the future of community teams are going into a really weird place actually because when the field first started out like maybe 15 20 years ago very small it was because developers weren't able to or companies in general weren't able to spend all of the time on the forums on the uh, you know message boards on um, the chat rooms, finding out what people thought about their products. So we would spend some time. Some time, definitely. But after a but while, it sort of turns into this static, right? I mean, uh, you sort of get to get a sense that the people who have the most time to spend and, and post repeatedly to uh, even they seem to think that they're the ones who will be listened to or obeyed, and I know that's not always the case. Uh, it's hard to gauge the feeling of a group overall when you got a small part of it that is very loud and, and, and very maybe even antagonistic and you're trying to find the needle in the haystack which is the, the, the you know people who post thoughtful opinions and maybe aren't just barraging you with it right yeah and it's uh you know if you're not spending all of your time doing that it's kind of hard to see what is an accurate representation of the entire picture like okay well this person is saying that how many other people are saying that so Community managers came on board to help kind of bridge that gap and almost be the conduit between developers and fans and represent both sides. Almost like, what are those like, those super, uh, the like uh, the lobbyists, the super like shady dealing like in politics? I think lobbyists, right? Are you saying you're a right? shady lobbyist? I don't, I'm not, but <laughs> I'm honest. I'm the one honest one in this. Um, <laughs> Vote for Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we're getting to a point now where social media is just exploding, where uh, forums and um, groups are, are coming to a point where you don't have to talk to a community manager who will then talk to a developer. You can tweet David Gator and tell him exactly what you think. And um, Twitter is such, he's going to see at least some of it. Till I block it. Till you block it yeah. <laughs> when people are sassy and rude. Yeah. But he's going to see something. So now, kind of community field is, is who is anyone interested in either is or becoming a community type of a person? Okay. 
follow the dream, follow the dream, do it. <laughs> But community is kind of going into a, a situation where it's not necessarily about gathering all of the feedback and presenting it to a team because the team is uh, smart enough and out there enough to kind of gauge it on their own and have a lot of really thoughtful discussions. So what my role has kind of um, evolved into is making sure that a lot of our special interest groups, that their needs are met, that they are talked about because a lot of those people are almost the invisible consumer that mm -hmm. they feel like they can't talk about things that are very niche that their their feelings their opinions are not necessarily that of the majority so why yeah. even say anything there's, I think there's a little bit of a feeling that unless they uh, outshout um, other people that they're not going to be heard at all. And, and you know that there is, is, I think there's a little bit of validity to that. You get the sense if you're interacting online uh, that the, the, there's, there's all this barrage of, of, of opinions flying around and you feel like it's completely impossible that if you just posted one uh, well thought out post, like you, you put your heart on into something to try to earnestly communicate with a developer that it'll just be, you know, lost in the whirlwind of, of data and how could we possibly parse all that information and that that, it, that is a that is an honestly a, a difficult thing because it's 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 it, overall it's just so much communication that that how could you how could you hope to get more than the, the, the barest sense of what was going on and, and picking out the the gems in there that we don't even necessarily know are in there right well that's what i do so. yeah, yeah that's that and that's that's why we have uh community managers yeah, but uh, to me, it's important, and I think I can't I can't speak for any other company. I, I am friends with a lot of community managers, and I think a lot of them feel the same way, that it's it's almost more important to make sure that those groups, the uh, you know LGBTQ community, um, women in gaming, those those people, the minorities and people of different socioeconomic levels, because I mean, let's face it, people talk about, oh, you know, always connected, blah, 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 and then someone was like, I live in Alaska, and it cost me $500 to buy your DLC, because it, that's how long it takes me to download it. And, and everyone's just like, oh, well, everyone has high-speed internet, right? No, everyone doesn't. And it's, it's almost more important to hear those voices, hear those concerns, because those are the people who can't stand up for themselves. And to me, that is the fan feedback that the developers aren't going to see when they go on Twitter in the forums. Mm. Um, and so I think something that I want to talk about on this panel, and I want to leave um, room for a lot of questions and discussion. You don't even have to ask me a question, or David. You can just tell us a story. I don't, I don't care. I love, mm. this is like a, a intimate enough group that we can um, we can sing kumbaya. Yeah, and the, the questions are a good point where uh, we're not exactly certain what you don't know or what you're looking yeah. to get out of this panel. So we'll, we'll, we'll speak our piece, at, at least what we think people might want to know. But if you have something specific in mind, even if you just have something you want to get off your chest, um, that would be a good way to do it. Yeah, I would say the first thing that is important, especially for um, special interest groups like cosplayers, people who do machinima, um, LGBTQ uh, fan fiction writers, is as much as possible, um, organize yourselves. This is an amazing kind of a thing. We can come here and stand outside and talk to people for two hours and hear lots of opinions. And there is no one voice for the community, but there is kind of a, okay, well, um, this person's saying this, this person's saying this. Um, this person isn't sure what they're saying, but I think based on what I'm hearing, they're actually asking for this other thing. Because a lot of times, fans can't exactly articulate what they want. You say, okay, well, we wanna build a car. Tell us what you want the car to look like. And if you are used to horses, you're just gonna tell us how to make a faster horse. You're, you can't tell us how to make the car. So our job is to listen to that and say, okay, well, they're saying that, a, a good example yesterday is someone was, was talking about uh, the Dragon Age universe mm -hmm. and how they wanted um, same-sex romances not just to be an individual thing, but to somehow translate into the lore more. And they were, they were kind of like, I don't, I don't necessarily want homophobia 
to be it. I don't want it like I don't I don't want it to be a negative thing. I I just don't I don't really know. And so I said, okay, well, kind of sounds to me like you're saying that you want to know if there are is a different culture, if there are different rituals to same sex romances or pairings or um, partnerships than uh, opposite sex or what that culture is like. And so David then got to talk about, you know, what's going on in Tevinter and Orlay and Ferelden. Mm. And it was a really great discussion. That's the kind of qualification you can only get interacting one-on-one, -on -one, though, because if he had just stopped with that initial statement, uh, I'm not sure I would have understand stood what he was going for, what he mm -hmm. was actually requesting, right? And it takes takes sort of, you know, a follow-up, like, so do you do you mean this? Is, this? is this what you're looking for? To actually, oh, I see what he's saying. If this was an online post, I might have walked away from that um, getting something completely different than he intended from it. And that's, that's really a danger when it comes to uh, things that you say online. What developers hear is, may not be exactly what you intend. And that, that applies across the board. I mean, that applies. If you think that uh, um, if, if there is a lot of really negative uh, posts, for instance, I'll say on a forum, that uh, that's all we would listen to. You know, I, I have to say that uh, developers aren't stupid. I mean, uh, we can we can sift through stuff, and the danger is what we what we don't necessarily see. But of the stuff that we see, if there are you know five, uh, you know ten posts that are, that are you know not really in depth, not really smart, uh, you know, we might get a sense that okay, that they're venting, they're getting something off their chest, fine. But that one post that where it's really thoughtful, where you've actually made a developer stop and think about what you've said is in fact going to be far more effective. Uh, the thing, I think the thing that people forget about when it comes to online communication, that it is communication, right? The, if your purpose is just to vent and make someone feel bad, you can do that. But if your purpose is to try to influence their thinking and change their mind, that requires you to use some empathy and to, to think about what you're saying. If you can do that with a developer, if you can, if you can, you know, the, maybe no developer isn't going to see it. Maybe there'll be a community manager to sort of collate that and, and bring the good stuff to, to put it before us so we can see it. But if you can get a developer's attention and and uh, uh, speak with your heart and your and your mind and listen as well, and I mean, ideally we'll do the same. But it's it's hard to listen when you don't get the sense that the person who's speaking to you is doing that in the first place, right? If you can do that, that that's your route. Because it doesn't matter uh, how many uh, dozens of people are, are sort of trying to outscream you. You don't have to be loud. You have to be thoughtful. And that's kind of the almost the joke in the, the fan side is we're listening, and it's like, oh yeah, that thanks for the PR speak to me. But <laughs> it's true. We are we are listening. We do hear. We're we're always on. But at the other end of it, it requires people to be talking. I've noticed that most people who have a, a pretty reasonable opinion, um, they might not necessarily love something or hate something, those are the people who don't take the time to go on Facebook or Twitter and talk about something. They'll play the game, they'll say, I didn't like this, I didn't like that. They might talk about it to their friends, and then they move on with their lives. Mm -hmm. So we very often do not hear from those people at all. And there's a lot of problems right now with how you know online communication works. We're actively working on that right now. Um, I wish we were at a place where I could talk to you about it. Next year at GamerCon, hopefully I'll be able to talk about that. But right now it's, it's, it's a situation where if you love something, you might not talk about it. You might, again, talk to your friends about it. So on our side, we might get a bunch of people saying they hated something, and we're like, okay, well, it sounds like all our fans hated this thing. And eventually, it sounds like they hate everything. In yeah, fact. <laughs> and and we know that's not the case. You so know that's I, not the case. I would say, when it's safe, when it's in a safe place, and we're trying to build more safe places. I I literally just brought on about thirty more moderators, um, who are being paid professionally, so they're not like solely slowly dying, but um, <laughs> 30 more moderators to help keep it a safe place, that when it is, you feel it's a safe place, communicate not just what you hate, but what you love or what you felt kind of indifferent about, because that's all something that we can take back and bring to the team and say, okay, well, we can't do anything about it for this game, but maybe the next game we develop, we can think about these things. I think that's what a lot of people forget, is that uh, they give feedback to a developer 
And for any kind of meaningful implementation of that feedback, it actually takes quite a while. Uh, by the time you learn about a, any particular game, uh, the chances for actual uh, meaningful implementation in that game are pretty limited. I mean, uh, there, there are smaller things, yes, but the, the larger elements, the, the fundamental design elements are we're way past the point once, once it's been revealed that we can make uh, big changes like that, unless, of course, there's some kind of delay. Yeah, absolutely. And but uh, uh, down the line, like for the next game, definitely. So it, it, does, it does take time. Yeah, and I think that when we talk about being safe, and being organized, I think those go hand in hand. If you are with a group of people who maybe you share the same interests, maybe you cosplay with them, or maybe you are really trying to fight for more same-sex romances in games, uh, finding people who, who share that mindset and you feel kind of this camaraderie with them can really bolster your feeling of being able to communicate your voice, to be able to do that. And that's why I love places like this. I love GamerX. Um, I'm going to be going to Geek Girl Con with a lot of our female developers. And those are, yeah, hopefully hope to see some of you there. Um, and that's, that's a place where, OK, a lot of times people in um, the queer community don't feel like they can talk to us online. And I, I hear that. I know that. It's not necessarily something where I want someone to have to put themselves out there and risk bigotry and hate. You deal with that enough in your life. It's the same thing with women. No one, no one wants to go on and, and say something and, and just be told that they're a nag or talk too much or um, boobs, whatever. It's, <laughs> but places like this are a really safe place. And I, I really encourage you to stay organized, find people who can make you feel more empowered. And that, that is the way that we can bring those invisible voices that I talked about and make them visible and make them empowered and make the, the uh, majority, or at least think that they're the majority, say, no, you know, there's, the, there's these other people as well that we are making these games for. Yeah. We are not just making games for white males straight 18 to 23. It does seem, it does seem that way a lot, but I, I think it, it is something that is changing. And I think that, that uh, the way it changes is, is uh, to speak your mind. I mean, uh, not, it, it can get a little disheartening sometimes if you, if you spend time online. Uh, I know what it's like. Uh, you feel like, why would anyone listen to me? You know, that they're not interested in my money. They're really interested in, in the 18 to 25 white male and, and uh, the, uh, my plane is just an accident, you know, a happy accident for, for developers, uh, for publishers. Um, and, and the only way that changes is by being more visible, by, by uh, speaking what you want. Uh, and, and by being visible, there, there's, there's a point, I think, uh, sort of a critical mass, which is where it's necessary for the conversation to reach, where uh, the, the companies can actually, rec you know, they, they see that this is a group that has uh, that wants certain things out of their game, and perhaps if they are given those things, uh, they will get more of that group to arrive. And so there, there is a there's an economic power that you hold, and if you are smart about it, it doesn't it doesn't take you know uh, massive campaigns of a million posts on every forum in order to be heard. Yeah, and that is where the community manager comes in. The community manager is no longer the conduit, but the community manager can be a really great activist for your stakeholder group. So um, my email is jmerizan, M-E-R-I-Z-A-N. It's like marzipan, but totally not at all, at bioware.com. I'm on Twitter. I literally answer more fan emails than I do like my coworkers. Like I prioritize, I prioritize emails and I'm like, oh, this is from a fan. I, I'm sorry, I need to take care of this. What's going on? On with the project, I'm sorry, I can't. I need to. I need to do these. So your community manager, not just in my my games, but in all our, our games in EA and Ubisoft and Obsidian and all of these great companies, your community manager is the person that you should be able to go to and say, look, this is this is the group I represent. I don't necessarily want to talk about this on the forums. I don't want to make this publicly known. But this is how I feel. This is how some of my friends feel. And 
a good community manager is going to take that back and take that in and say, how can I support these people more? So talk to your community managers. Talk to the devs directly. Don't feel like you have to go scream in a forum to make yourself known because that will actually do the opposite. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm ready to open thing, up for questions. The thing that to remember, too, is that if you want to talk directly to developers, that's fine. If you can find one that, that uh, will respond to you. Uh, I guess I think the thing to remember is that they're they're human, just like the other people online. Uh, I find when I look on, online, you find a lot of people when they get into an argument, they're not really talking to each other, they're talking at each other, right? Sort of shouting their opinion and then the person just responds with theirs, but they're not actually communicating. And that could happen with developers too. Um, and and uh, I'm not gonna claim that, uh, that I'm a perfect listener myself or that my fellow developers are. Uh, if somebody comes at us and, and, and they put us on the defensive, it's, it's really easy to, to fall into the trap where you get angry and, and that, that's not going to help anyone, of course. Um, even though the anger, that, that, the frustration where, where, the, where that comes from can be uh, completely legitimate for everyone involved. But I think uh, smart communication is about uh, having some empathy. Totally. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I have a million business cards because I keep forgetting to bring my business cards places. So you guys get to have them. So <laughs> afterwards, um, we'll be hanging out out there if you have questions that you don't want to ask in front of everyone. If you want, I'll give you my business card. We can talk mm -hmm. off, uh, I always say offline. I don't, do you, that, okay, I'm sorry. I just want to say, this is like a weird, like I, corporate thing. Everyone says like, in a meeting or something, we'll they'll be like, offline. oh, we'll talk offline about it. And I'm like, are we online right now? We're, <laughs> we're on the phone. What do you even mean offline? We're always on. Can we say anyway. that in person too? Yes, that's why I, I was like, oh, if you want to, we'll talk offline. I just, <laughs> so if you want, get my business card. We will talk. I, I really care about your opinions. Um, even if you don't care about Bioware, I want to hear, I want to hear your opinions as, um, I think what we're saying applies gamers. to more than just Bioware. Yeah, absolutely. Know? Um, but talk to your community managers. Do you, do we want to take some questions? Let's take some questions. Let's yeah. take questions. We've got literally got a couple of runners. 20 to 30, 30 to 40. We have 20 minutes, 25 minutes. I can do math. <laughs> Uh, hi, so my question is about uh, the way you get feedback from gamers uh, immediately, because right now it seems like the most uh, often used channel is through forums or through Twitter, which happens after the, after the fact of actually playing the game and like people form opinions. But mm -hmm. um, in like, you know, industries like startups where they have to get feedback uh, more quickly, what they do is they build you know, feedback forms or surveys you know, into, their, you know, into their product flow. So are we going to see something similar in games where like after you complete a level, maybe you get a survey or something like that? That's definitely, um, that's definitely something that is a possibility. Unfortunately, it comes with the, it comes with the risk that people feel like they're being spammed or forced, like it's stuck in their game. Um, I know every time I call my bank and my bank's like, would you like to take a survey? I'm like, no, I would like you to fix my credit card right now. <laughs> But those, those are really important um, things to do. And if you aren't really frustrated about your credit card, it really is good to take those surveys. People do read the results. And they cost a lot of money for the company to put out. Yeah. So um, they're called the Net Promoter Score, which is like how likely are you to recommend this to your friend. So they're, they're very good surveys. But I think, that, I think that probably what a lot of companies are trying to do is make it fun to take a survey. Mm -hmm. And um, what I think is most effective, and I hope I'm not spoiling anything, but to give people different levels of interaction, maybe you don't want to uh, post a comment or take a full survey, but you might want to see a list of results and be able to click, I agree with that, and then move on with yeah. your life. Or, Do you ever, you ever agree to take a survey? And then you're like into it and you realize it's this really extensive thing. You're like, oh my God. This should take you 15 <laughs> minutes. Oh, every single one is a write-in. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we recognize that not everyone wants to give feedback the same way. Not everyone wants to write a big, long thing. Or so right now it's, it's opt-in. But I think the thing to do would be, you know, you've played a game and you feel like you have something to say about it, would be to look for a place like, you know, uh, um, I mean, ideally, the company will communicate that there is something available for you to, to 
a way for you to give a response. But if not, to look for a place, and, you know, let's see if they have a, a survey of some kind, find a place where you can post your opinion. And, and, and you know, it's, it's totally okay to go there, post your, what your, your peace of mind and, and let it go. I mean, uh, uh, like I said, one, one thoughtful, well-communicated uh, post is, 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 is worthwhile. And the other thing is for very immediate feedback and um, player behavior, you are giving that to a lot of developers while you are playing. Um, every time you start a game and it says, uh, do you consent to have telemetry turned on or off? Actually, ours was opt out. Yes, well, except for uh, Germany, where you oh, have yeah. to specifically turn it on because yeah. of weird German rules. But um, <laughs> automatically, your your choices that you make in the game, the every every move you make, how long it takes, I, if you're connected to the internet, mm. that goes right to the studio. We call that telemetry. Reads that and analyzes that. That that's actually another another part of my department is um, we have some amazing. Um, PhDs who analyze our behavior. Yeah, because you have to be careful, right? I mean, uh, telemetry can tell you a lot of things about players do, but it can't tell you why they do it, right? And you don't want to make too many assumptions. But uh, the data it gives you is is great. I know that uh, now that, and it's becoming more common, I think, yeah. uh, taking telemetry. I mean, uh, the sample size we had for Dragon Age Origins was in the millions. So when you're talking about millions of players, uh, it's a big difference when you have people online, uh, especially uh, every, everybody when they go online, they, they, they tend to try to beef up their own opinion rather than talk, like if I'm reading something online and someone's talking about how something made them feel, I felt like this and I, I think that is perfect because I'll, you know I can t you, you are totally in charge of your own feelings regardless of whether or not uh, the game, we wanted the game to make you feel that way. That's a great thing that you have complete authority over but a lot of people try to beef it up by, by trying to make their, their, how they feel. Uh, be an objective opinion. Yeah. Like, oh, and they well, say everyone feels everyone this way. Everyone feels this way about this character. And I'm like, well, actually, according to um, my data, 80% of the people didn't even recruit that person. So <laughs> it doesn't make it doesn't make that 20% any less valid, but right. it certainly invalidates that guy who says, well, everyone did this. And I'm like, no, actually, everyone didn't. But um, Yeah, so the telemetry actually was very, it, it's often very enlightening in that, in that uh, it, 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 it puts the, a good context that, that eliminates sort of the, the person who uses, um, um, I'm, I'm losing my words, I'm an Emma writer. Uh, I don't know. Anecdotal evidence. You know, where they, they've spoken to a couple of friends and that to them is everyone. So we, we can sort of uh, uh, reframe that. It's like, it's like the person who claimed that, uh, oh, you have what, 1%, 2% of people you play gay romances? We can say, no, like, more like 20%. How about that, huh? So that's always good to know. Yeah, absolutely. So long story short, when you are playing a game, as long as you don't opt out of it, you are already giving a lot of feedback. And we have some really talented people who are able to, you know, not not say that it's it's a causation, but correlate, okay, yeah. well, this is what's well, going we, on. We always use that data as support, by the way. Not, not We will never say, well, we, you know, only X number of people use this, so we should never do that. It's, it's, it's always there as advice like maybe to support or, or, you know, maybe we don't have to put as much into this because no one plays it. But sometimes, you know, the, the, the minority opinion, like having choices, for instance, just because, you know, only 5% of people might take that choice, that doesn't make the existence of that choice invaluable to people even if they mostly took the other one, right? Mm -hmm. You wouldn't just take it out because the fact that you were offered a choice has inherent value in and of itself. So that's more a design thing. Do you have another question? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, are there uh, any kind of um, avenues for discourse or you know communities you specifically look to that give you good, honest criticism? Because I, I feel like news hits or a game comes out, it's like, yeah, I know how Gaff's going to react to it pretty much before it even gets there. Um, so can you guys speak to that a bit? It, it definitely, we look everywhere. I look on, you know, for our stuff, I look on the Bioware social network. We look on Facebook. We look on Twitter. We look on the Reddit, we look on you know, IGN forums, GameSpot, we look everywhere, and then we say, okay, well, breaking it down into overall sentiment, um, into just very generalized, this, this is a positive response, this is a negative response, this is neutral, like uh, positive being, um, I really love this, keep up the good work, or 
oh my gosh, a bunch of expletives in a really bad way. And then a lot of things saying, I was a bit confused about this thing, and then that goes into neutral or, or some kind of thing. So we put it into positive, negative, neutral. Neutral is always the biggest percentage. And if something is above 30% um, positive, then we it's, it's generally a win. It's very, very small. So we look at, at Facebook, Twitter, all of these things, and we pretty much know enough information about those communities to be like, well, Facebook generally skews a bit more negative overall. So we know in comparison to Twitter, which is a much more positive community, in comparison to 4chan, which <laughs> is blocked on our site. <laughs> Work won't let us go there. Um, and different communities. So we definitely see that and we know, okay, over the overall period of who these communities are, that kind of colors our, our perception of who's saying what, but we look, we look everywhere. And if there's a community that's a, a really small one that I might not know about, just tweet me a link and be like, hey, you might want to look here. I get that all the time. Someone put, uh, this was a really good um, uh, critique of the Normandy and how it was laid out. And it's, it was one guy who wrote like a paragraph on Reddit and it was, stuck into like, you know, 500 comments down and someone found it and tweeted it to me and I read it and I was like, yeah, that's actually really, really valuable. So I sent it to Casey, our executive producer, and he was like, this is great. And he sent it to um, Dusty, who is basically designed the Normandy. So it doesn't matter if it's a big giant thing or the front page of Kotaku. Uh, we do very, very good research and, and read everything and we have a pretty good sense um, for what things skew different ways. Yeah. It went in the general sense of, of I liked it, I didn't, I didn't like it. We can kind of get that, you know, mm, which way is the wind blowing? Yeah, we can get a sense of that. It's often more helpful if somebody can uh, ex articulate why they liked it or why they didn't like it. You know, that can be very useful for a developer. But in the, at the end of the day, too, you're going to get opinions that are across the board, right? So it's so it's, 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 it's like, like, is there anger about something? Why aren't you listening? Well, I mean, there is no consensus, and there will never be consensus. We're looking at opinions from across the board, and you know, eventually we look at that, and, and we, we, we absorb, it takes time to absorb it, and then we'll put it aside, and then we have to decide, okay, where do we go based on that? <coughs> Other question? Oh, I guess it's me. <laughs> oh, oh, hi. <laughs> All right. Uh, Bear with me because I don't want this to be the most shallow question ever. <laughs> I'm okay with shallow questions. Okay, cool. <laughs> Whatever. Right, so I want to know how much do you guys respond to people hacking and modding your games? And I want to put this within the framework of I was watching my ex play through, uh, God, I think it was Dragon Age or something. The, the one with the character Zevran in it. Yeah. And he downloaded a hack to be able to date Alistair. And to me, that made sense because, well, Alistair is way more attractive than Zevran. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, you wouldn't date that person. But at the same time, I'm like, well, or there are other gay people who are thinking this too. And they're like, yeah, yeah, like, I totally want to date Alistair instead because Zevran's just not doing it for me. And then when I watched him play uh, Mass Effect, it's like, oh, cool, you can date this gay guy, this sob story. Yeah. But I really want the, the Latino tattoo number that's over there. <laughs> <laughs> so we download the hack, and all of a sudden, we're having a gay old time with it. <laughs> so I kind of, I almost view that as like, by observing how people are using hacks and mods of games, you can really see what they truly want versus like the kind of half I think you want this kind of well, thing. Yes and no. Uh, mods uh, sort of inherently are, are uh, people sort of, this group really wants to change it in a way. If there was enough of it, we might go, hmm, maybe that's something we should have included. But at the end of the day, uh, most mods we've seen are sort of people wanting to just to, to Change something, even though it, it like goes contrary to character or, or the, the what we want to do with the game, that they want to do it for themselves. Cool. Well, why, why, why we worry about that? We would at least consider it. But it's like uh, um, the, one of the most popular mods for Dragon Age Two was to make Isabella white. Does that mean that we should get well? Clearly, uh, more people are are interested in having white characters. So th there is you, you have to. <laughs> Right, you know what? Uh, you do have to qualify the interest, and and, and uh, they, yeah, we might we might say, yeah, a lot of people wanted to date Alistair, 
Maybe they just want better looking romances. <laughs> I think maybe. It's valid. So, or, or maybe they, they want a more masculine male characters available as a, as a male romance. Or, you know, like, you try not to put too much judgment on the why and just see what they're doing and, and think of, try to decide if that's something we can incorporate or should incorporate. It's, 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 a, it's hard to, to judge that. And, and, and yeah, I would, I would caution on modding specifically because um, it was, you know, we had the tool set for Origins, but since then we haven't officially supported modding. So it's pretty impossible for us to track that and we don't really want to because we're like we don't see this <laughs> but so I would I like because just because that is we might hear things about what's popular and what's going on but we don't actually have the data available to us to track it and we don't really want that um, it's it's more valuable to, to me and to my team for you to find avenues to tell us that that's what you want as opposed to um, gaming the system and doing that and hoping that you're like, okay, if more of us band together and all get this hack, then maybe they'll hear us and listen to us because we are probably very actively trying not to see that. Well, unofficially, unofficially it might, might get heard, but uh, it's better for us to hear why you'd like to see it different rather yeah. than trying to interpret it for yeah. ourselves. Other question? Do we have time? Yeah, we still have time. Hi, so um, I wanted to talk about Mass Effect 3 and the blowback that happened about the ending and how did you deal with what seemed like a flood of negative feedback and was there positive feedback to kind of balance it out or like what, how did, how did that like affect, well one, you personally like seeing this after like a game that people love and then like how did you kind of parse that out and realize was it terribly negative like they're saying everyone hates the ending when mm -hmm. like I don't think everyone really did. Well, I think hard part of that, I'll, I'll let you deal with this, but the, the thing to be cautious of that, that and, and the thing that I think it was difficult for the Mass Effect team, which, which I'm not actually on, uh, was that uh, the, there was a, a lot of different opinions, and I think it, that a lot of people like to present it as, and everybody disliked this one thing, right? When that was, I don't think that was ever true. There was, there was a, a wide array of emotions and reactions that uh, really uh, made the team sort of sit back, and, and they had to consider it very carefully. So this is how it all went down. <laughs> so we actually started seeing stuff before the game even came out, um, just due to, through the lovely joys of a promotion that we had to get some people early copies of the game, and then those got sold on eBay, and then those uh, went on like Twitch or something and people were playing through, we started seeing people already talking about stuff. Um, that of course in started increasing. I started getting messages from certain people being like, this is like GameStop managers, for instance, being like, I'm, this is not really normal at all for Mass Effect. I don't know why people are talking to me about this stuff. So we took various things it, and um, it meant different things for different people. Like obviously marketing is going to respond to, you know, GameStop managers saying that I'm going to respond to people on a, a Twitch stream saying stuff. And so we, we took that in, we listened. It yes, it was overwhelmingly negative. There there would absolutely it be incorrect to say that. I don't think that everyone felt that way because again since it's all died down, I have heard a lot more, yeah, you know, I thought it was fine, whatever. But those people also say, but you know, I moved on with my life, or I, I, <laughs> I please don't quote that out of context. <laughs> or they, they, you know, they say things like, but I, you know, I did not want to stick myself in that fight. And I was like, yeah, I don't, I didn't want you to either. Like, you don't need to get like, people shouting at you for enjoying something or for feeling neutral about it. So a lot of people were just like, they walked in and it's like a bar fight going on and they're like, nope, I'm gonna go find another bar. <laughs> um, and the, the really difficult problem for my team, and I, I don't think I've worked as hard on anything in my whole life. I was, I was at the office until 2 a.m. and then I would come back I would go home and it was like a 30 minutes because there were no traffic to go home. 
I would go to sleep for an hour um, and I'd still have my Twitter next to me and I'd be answering as many questions as I could until a few times Twitter locked me out because I had tweeted too many times in one day and they thought I was a spam bot. Um, <laughs> so that happened a few times. One time I did, I tweeted a thousand times in one day and I was pretty proud of that. Um, so, <laughs> so then I would, I would wake up again um, at like five in the morning, drive to work, 6 a.m., be there. Um, I got really friendly with the security guards. Um, and and that, was, that was what we did. And it was, it was so important to us, not because people were angry about it, but because, like I said, they couldn't tell us how to make a car. They were, they were saying, I, didn't, I don't like this, but they had a million different reasons. There's no one reason why, there's no majority, there's a lot of different things. And I actually think that in hindsight, it's kind of a cool thing that it sparked so many different discussions. Um, there's still a lot of really cool theories out there that um, I've actually gone back and played the game again and been like, oh, that's, I'm gonna play as if this is what's going on. And there's no reason why not to. It's definitely levels of meaning and metaphor. Uh, but after that, um, my team compiled a giant Excel spreadsheet and said, these are the main concerns. How do we want to address these? We, Can we address them? Um, yes, mm -hmm. well, yes. So we had the, the, the big list. I think there were about 40 different things that I boiled it down to. Um, we took it to the team. Um, we had a giant meeting with Casey, Aaron Flynn, who's our GM, um, my team, a lot of the producers, some of the writers, uh, a lot of the you know lead like concept artists and cinematic designers. And we said, okay, what here is reasonable? What here is not? What here do we want to do like obviously we did not mean for people to think that Tally is starving and having to like eat herself because she, there's no like extra food for her to eat that was not our intention so obviously we need to correct some of these things and obviously there are some people who are never going to be pleased let's figure out who those people are um say you know thank you but n no thanks that's not what we're going to do who are the people that we want to want to please and, and who are the people that we know are already happy with it? And what we boiled it down to was we want to provide clarity and closure. And that represented what we thought was the most amount of people asking for, again, not quite knowing exactly how to frame it. And so then, we went in and said, okay, so we, ha we had another big meeting and said, okay, let's look at all of the things that people were asking for about uh, the genophage, about um, the quarian and the geth, and, and we put it down to the top three things and then other things that went along with it, the stories that people wanted their, their closure on. And I think there's, um, there's about like 138 different you know, threads and narratives that it, it could have gone into. Um, I wish I had the amazing, just like, plot conditionals. It's insane. Um, if you go online, you can see the San Diego Comic-Con panel from 2012, where that whole, it's crazy, and Parrish um, Lay, who is the lead cinematic designer for that, did that. So then we started to work on the Extended Cut DLC, and it was, it was a very interesting uh, process. Mm, kind of unprecedented. To, yeah. You know, it normally was, once you put something out there, that's it, it was it's final word, right? Totally. It was, it was something where I was really proud because I, before that, I had not really felt like a developer. Um, and a lot of people, you know, I, there's, there's a lot of threads out there that says, Jessica Marison's stupid. She doesn't know what she's talking about. She's not a dev. No, I'm not a dev. Um, I could not write a video game or tell you how to write a great video game. But community managers are very, very ingrained and um, fixed into that process. And so the extended cut and then um, 
all of the DLC that followed was the first time that I felt my team, since I was on, because I came on at the end of like the Mass Effect 3 development cycle, that we were really helping to shape what was going out just because my team was looked at to say, okay, well, we don't, ha we can't go on to Reddit and, and, and even 4chan and the BSN and all of these places and, and see the bigger picture. So we need you guys to look at the bigger picture. And I've never seen anyone work as hard as the Mass Effect developers worked in, in that, you know, six week span leading up to how we decided to develop the extended cut and then actually working on the extended cut. A lot of developers after after they ship the game, they you know take sabbatical, go on vacation, and no one went on vacation. We said, okay, well cancel your plans. This is what we're going to work on, and um, it wasn't it wasn't a bad thing. Everyone was you know it was kind of um, hi ho off to work we go about it and. I, we're really proud about it. It was a very emotional experience for the fans and for us, and I, I'm really pleased with what came out of it. Well, I think we should probably wrap this up. Uh, so Jessica's got some business cards, I think she mentioned. Out there, just ask me for one. Please don't sign me onto a mailing list. Yeah. <laughs> if you, so if you have any more uh, questions, we'll both be out there if you, if you want to uh, grab us and say something. Otherwise, uh, hopefully this, this was uh, beneficial. If you thought it uh, was or even wasn't, uh, dropping us a line. And maybe next time we come back to uh, uh, GamerX, uh, we can try to, try to uh, get, you know. We'll finesse. Tweak it a bit and yeah. then see if there's something more useful that Tell you actually want to Tell us what you like. Tell us what you didn't. We can take it. Thank, thank you guys thank you so much. much. Thank you.